Okay, all good. Okay, everybody can hear me? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nico, um, also known as uh, Dem Nico Art, uh, and I'm a freelance 3D artist, and I like to create short films. So, uh, a little background about myself. So, uh, for the last 20 years or so, I've been um, uh, working in advertising as a graphic designer. So, regular 2D graphic design. Uh, but I was always interested in uh, doing 3D and uh, making 3D stuff and film production in general. But back then, like 20 years ago or so, uh, the landscape was way different. Uh, so I didn't have the opportunities. Um, but then uh, around 2020, when we all know what happened, uh, I was uh, interested in uh, 3D and I... Uh, I found out about Blender, and I know like in the early 2000s, Blender looked like this. And uh, back then, it wasn't really attractive to me, or I didn't even know it existed. But uh, now I use Blender since 2020. I incorporate this into my graphic design and advertising work, and I mostly do now like product visualizations, product animations, uh, still in advertising. So this is some of my work that I did recently. Um, it's very, very, I'm especially proud of this one. This is really cool. Uh, but my, my true passion is storytelling. So telling compelling stories. I consumed pop culture all my life. So I had so many ideas. And with Blender suddenly in my hands, I could be like a whole production studio. So I could be a d director, a uh, DP, animator, editor, a sound designer. Could be all of this and with just one piece of software, which is... Still, to this day, it's crazy for me. Um, my biggest inspiration is uh, Love, Death and Robots. I love it so much. I'm pretty sure many of you also uh, have seen this, uh, like this uh, mature kind of animation style. And uh, by the way, if someone at home or maybe here is from Bl Blur Studio, the guys who make it, um, <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> Uh, but why am I standing here? So uh, recently I um, published my fifth short film. Um, it's this one here called Mavericks Episode 5. And it's based off uh, the 90s uh, video game series called Mega Man. Um, I don't know if some of you know it. Uh, oh, nice. New best friends. Awesome. <laughs> And um, yeah, this was my most elaborate and my most complex uh, project to date. And I learned, learned uh, many things, so I'd like to share some of, you, uh, some of those things with you. Um, I won't show you the whole thing because it's uh, almost five minutes long, so it would take like one quarter of my whole presentation. But you can watch it later on uh, with this QR code. Um, please do after the presentation. But I will show you a short trailer, so we kind of know we're on the same page, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. So the big question is, um, how did I do it? Um, well, it's pretty simple, actually. You basically just have to um, put your complete life on hold, limit your social interactions, no friend contact whatsoever. Don't go seeking for clients because you won't have time for that, so no money. And you'll um, unfortunately have a very sad, but still very supportive partner. So... Um, <laughs> All good, all good. Um, but the big thing that I want to talk about is efficiency. Um, and the, uh, nothing would be possible without it. And I'm going to talk about efficiency in those four categories, which is learning, planning, creation, the creation process, and perfectionism. Let's start with learning. And um, to give it a little bit of context, so uh, when I started learning Blender, I was looking for a project that I could uh, learn Blender on, and I remembered this video game, Mega Man X, from back then, and I had fun, fun memories from my childhood, so I thought, hey, let's take one of those characters, that's how they look like, 
and uh, recreated in Blender. They, they are pretty simple, but there are some challenges, so that was cool. And later on, I, I made them more realistic, like over the next months and years, I made them more realistic, and I added details, and um, I animate them, animated them, and then in the end, I created for each of them a short episode. Uh, I, I branded this whole thing Mavericks, and um, I saw an opportunity in that approach, is that each character of them, um, so these are the characters in my style, um, each of them has uh, like a certain thing. So you have like the forest creature, you have this electric creature, one can fly. And I, um, that was a great opportunity for me to focus on a certain aspect of Blender and learning it. Uh, so uh, I could experiment with tones, with genres, learn new things and challenges. Uh, but I would only focus on the things that I need for this project specifically. Um, and that was my first big realization that don't try to learn everything. Um, I barely know geometry nodes. I don't know how to sculpt or create like organic characters uh, or vast environments um, because I don't need them. Uh, it would be cool to know all those things, but uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't know what to do with this knowledge. So uh, that realization gave me like a inner peace of mind and uh, I could focus very much. So that was very cool. And uh, the challenges that I wanted to tackle with the fifth episode were the following. Uh, zero cuts, so it's one continuous shot without any, any editing. Um, humanoid animation, I, that's, that was the first time that I, that I animated uh, yeah, humanoid characters, which was incredible. Uh, understanding linked libraries, so uh, linking projects into this project. Uh, I have to say thanks to Perik for, for his awesome tutorial on that. That was very helpful. Um, lighting, so setting up interesting lighting scenarios and uh, using physics. I know many people are about oh, uh, simulation nodes and whatsoever. I still love the physics system as it is, sparks and debris and rigid body, all of it all. And I use it a lot in this, this uh, film. So the planning stage. So first of all, it's a big project, right? Wrong. <laughs> but that's the first thing. I, uh, I try to not see it as one big project, but rather as a series of small self-contained projects. Um, with, the, with this mindset, so if you, if you um, try to see it as one big project, it will get, uh, get overwhelming very fast. Uh, it builds up pressure. You, you don't know where to start. It's such a huge thing, you know? Um, you have 1,000 ideas. You, you jump from left to right. You do a little bit, a little bit of that, and nothing really comes together. Um, but when you approach it as like a series of small self-contained projects, you have a very focused workflow and you have a sense of accomplishment uh, after each step, which is really satisfying. And uh, you have always something to uh, finish that you show off to your friends and family or post on social media, which is really cool. And just to give you an idea what, what those sub-projects were for me, um, I will show you. So this is basically the main character and the model that I created. So modeling the original character, then redesigning the character, then uh, rigging it and testing the rig is very important, obviously. <laughs> I can't stress this enough how important that step is. <laughs> yeah. Then sketching out all the ideas. So take a piece of paper, write everything down that, that needs to be uh, in the film. So all the story beats, all the ideas, all the small details, all the things that you suddenly come up, just write it down. Uh, we have the previous stage. I'll come to, get, uh, to that later. Uh, creating the environment was obviously one, one big chunk. Recording reference footage, if you do animations or so, uh, it's very helpful, I highly recommend it to record yourself. The animation process itself, then uh, fixing all the things. That's a separate step, seriously. Uh, so many things go wrong that I, I highly recommend to just sit down and fix all the things that, that you find in, the, in your thing. Then obviously editing and sound design. Uh, with this episode, these guys here um, helped me with the sound design, they're awesome, check them out. And uh, yeah, now we come to the previous part. <laughs> so uh, for that, um, what previous is, it sounds like this thing that Hollywood studios do. We do previous and, or animatics. Um, but I think that step should be incorporated in every, every short film production. No matter if it's 10 seconds, 20 seconds, it's basically like a 3D storyboard and you plan it out um, before, or you create the film before actually creating it. Uh, and for that, um, someone uh, helped me a lot with that, which is this guy. Two years ago, uh, Yalti uh, did a talk on how he plans out his scenes and uh, the staging and everything. 
And uh, that's what I basically did. So I uh, created a map of the, of the whole uh, environment. And uh, this way I could define like the locations of all the things so uh, you know exactly. So where do we start? Where does the camera go? Where do we end up? What are the distances? And uh, the position, positions of all the important objects and characters. And this is basically what it looked like. This is like the fight scene in the film. You see there are no details, uh, simple animations. Um, just basically just sliding the characters left and right. Uh, it's basically like a blueprint for, for the whole film. And um, it's a very important stage because in this you define two major things that are essential. Uh, so if you do that afterwards, it can be very tricky um, if you don't plan out right. And these two are timing and camera position. Uh, for timing, so uh, I recorded also myself uh, with, a, with a friend. Uh, we played out some, some scenarios. And you can already see, like, we move. Our movements are right, but they are still pretty slow because we tend to overthink it. We, we try to make, make the movements very clear. And in the end, you see the comparison to the final animation, which is way faster, way snappier. So in the end, I, I uh, increase the speed of like 20, 30 to sometimes 40 percent to make it really hit, like, hit the perfect way. Um, so uh, there's also the opposite, where some actors actually need time to breathe. So uh, the, there needs to be some pauses between the separate actions. Sometimes it's just half a second. That's all it needs. But the brain and the eyes actually need, need some time to, to process what, what you're seeing. You can't just jump from one thing to the other. That's what I learned with the fight scene. It went way too fast. And um, so you have to be aware of what the viewer is feeling, what they are seeing, and what you're basically doing as a filmmaker, which is um, you create points of interest on the screen and you guide the viewer. It's almost like if you take their head and you say like, okay, now look here, now look there, now be scared, now laugh, now be sad or whatever. And um, you basically try to manipulate the viewer into feeling something specific. Um, now the one, I, I would say the biggest part is, or the most important part, is camera position. Because of one big reason. And it's with knowing the camera position, you know exactly where to put in most of the effort and what is, isn't important at all. So it's pretty obvious. So uh, camera position is one of the first things I do, uh, like period, in the whole project. This is what it looks like. So the white line is the, um, the path of the camera. And as you can see, OK, I know where the camera is. So everything far away or on some other sides you don't need to, to like work on it like for hours or hours because it won't be far away, it won't be seen. So you already have like a, like the idea of what will be important or not. And also, there is one big chunk that is completely empty because with setting up the camera, I knew, okay, the camera won't pan into this direction, so I didn't even bother to put anything in there. Uh, I just left it completely empty. Um, that's where we can come to the creation part, and that's, that adds into that. So, for example, you can see here the close-up of like a terminal that I, that I used. So you see in close-up and in light, it's, it, the textures are a little bit messy, it's all over the place. It looks okay, but nothing really like fancy. But in the final film, you see uh, that it's out of focus, in darkness, and uh, it's far away, so why bother? So the, the example on the left is perfectly fine for that case. Um, we have also the opposite, which are the hero objects, so uh, um, the hero assets, as obviously the hero. Um, so if they are close to the camera, you obviously put a lo lot of more um, effort into this. But we have also situations like this. Well, uh, it's very close to the camera, but it's um, it's a low res texture. I didn't see it for a long time, and. Um, because we focus on the, char uh, on the character, right? So the uh, character is in focus, our eyes are focused on him, and we don't see the imperfections on the side. And that what leads me to perfectionism. Um, my, uh, so my big takeaway is don't finish everything like to 100%, so each asset or so. Because you can always improve, like literally always, you can always add more and more and more. And my rule of thumb is roughly like, okay, finish things up to 80% so that they are like good. Not perfect, but good, okay, then you can work with them. And then move on. And uh, with that, you will have the project way, way early, uh, so you'll you finish the project way faster. And with that, you'll have a better understanding of the whole project. So from that, you know exactly where should I improve things on and where not. So you understand better yeah, what needs improvement. And uh, mistakes happen all the time. And I have an example for, for you. Maybe some of you have seen this. It's a scene from The Abyss from James Cameron. I'll just play it out. Um, 
it's like an intense scene, it's in a submarine, the water's rising, they're, they are arguing like, okay, you should take the helmet, no, you should take the helmet. It's very intense, but maybe some of you have seen it already. Uh, there, there is a mistake in there. I don't know if, if you've seen it. Um, I'm just gonna show you. There's actually someone wiping the camera lens in front of us with a big piece of cloth. <laughs> Hands up, who's, see, who's seen this uh, already? You see? Okay, so that, that shows me that Ca James Cameron back then said, okay, the perf I like the performance here the most. I want to have this shot. And he was 100% sure that nobody would, would uh, notice the cloth or would be bothered by it because you're so invested in the, in the scene, right? So um, that's, that's what you basically, you're, you're basically like a magician. You, you say, hey, look here, but don't look here. Th that's where all the mess is. And you're distracting basically people. And that's one of the scenes from the film. There's a little mistake. I don't know if you've seen this. Oh, after watching it 30 times, I realized that, uh, oh no, the arm is clipping through the pipes at the wall. And I thought like, oh no, I have to re-render everything, and oh no, uh, waste of render time, whatever. But then I thought about it. I, I noticed it after watching it 30 times, me as a creator. So if you think about it, the viewer will see it one time, two times, maybe max three times, Nobody will notice. And that also gave me like this piece that, don't worry about it, don't waste your time, it's okay. And in the end, it's, it's a funny anecdote maybe later on. Um, efficiency also goes into animation. And uh, that leads me to the segment that I like to call a love letter to the noise modifier, the one in the graph <laughs> editor. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, for you who don't know, it's, it adds basically like uh, randomness to, to your animation curves. And I, bless you. And then uh, what I like to do with it, it's, it, it's mostly like for jittering stuff, for random jitters. But what I do, I stretch the noise completely very far away, make it very subtle, and add it to character animation. So in the end, you see on the left-hand side, uh, that's just a basic animation. And on the right-hand side, I added a little, some imperfections in, into the hands, into the hip, into the shoulders. So you can kind of see like those little additional movements, random movements, that add more life to the character. You know, it feels a little bit more life, not so stiff. And uh, that's basically it. So efficiency, um, good topology, uh, UV unwrapping, added details. These are all very important things that everybody sh should know how to do, but only in, in moments where it's really necessary. So in a film where we, where we pan left and right, we cut, we distract, we focus. Uh, I decided to use it case by case basis. So uh, that's my big takeaway, that the, the purpose should be this one and the, the uh, work should fit into the purpose. Um, and I would encourage everyone to create their own short film because I love short films. Short films are amazing. They are limited in time and that's what makes them very, very appealing to me because with those limitations, uh, they force you basically to be super creative and get rid of all the fluff, all the unnecessary stuff that, that normally would go into a film. You just focus on the m uh, most important things. And uh, the storytelling also needs to be on point. So every unnecessary uh, story beat gets just thrown away and you just, just focus completely on the story, which is really cool. And they also force you to solve problems in the most efficient and creative way, which I think is a great way to learn Blender because um, yeah, you have to de dive deep into the Blender uh, stuff. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, now you can see how just one person could create a five-minute short film. Um, this, this is my Patreon, uh, wink, wink. Uh, I, if you like to support the production of the series, uh, I will really appreciate it. It's, I am planning on doing 13 episodes. I'm at episode five, so it's still a long way to go. So I really appreciate it. Just gonna wait for some more cameras to rise, okay. <laughs> and here are all my uh, social media links, so you can follow me on the Dimnico. I'm on all the platforms, so uh, if you wanna follow me, please do. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, I have tons of uh, more and more info, uh, what add-ons I use and uh, all the stuff, so please talk to me. I'm happy to talk more about uh, me and uh, myself <laughs> and the project. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah.